Right, in this video we're going to show you how to change your Range Rover Sport L494 from this sort of bumper to, ooh, that's nice, this SVR bumper. So we have done a video on the different types of bumper you can put on your Range Rover Sport and I'll put the link to that there if I remember, remind me, there. So to do this upgrade, we are only replacing the front bumper. We do not need to change the wiring. We do not need to change the headlights. We, work, we don't need to change the grill if you don't want to. You might as well at the same time. But they're all part of a jigsaw puzzle. So the grill, headlights and bumper, as long as you're in the same year group, the SVR doesn't demand any changes. Now, one thing the SVR did have that we're not gonna do, it had some extra wheel arch extensions that went on here, some little trim bit. But we are just gonna fit this on. So this one has come pre-painted in chorus gray. We also sell these on the website in black. But we're not worried about that, we're just seeing whether it can be done. So, I'm gonna leave that, it's sort of clipped on there just to show you what we're trying to do. The first thing we're gonna have to do is whoop the headlight washers, the parking sensor lube. Interestingly, the fog lights that this one has, the SBR didn't have any fog lights. So one thing we are not gonna have to swap is fog lights. What we could do with finding Tyler is some blanks to plug in those fog light connectors. So that when you, cause we're gonna swap yeah. the loom over, aren't we? Yeah. So, um, cause otherwise it gets water in, but we'll use an old bit of glove or something. <laughs> right, okay. So right, let's get going. We'll get some tools together. We'll flip this over and we'll start stripping the wiring out of this bumper. Right, we are gonna need one of these little snake's tongue. They've probably got a proper name, tool, right? And, right, we've got this bump, this bit here, just on those little fir tree fixings there. So let's start there. Right, and then we, it looks like these were at some point, oh no, they were attached to the underside of that surround, weren't they, Ty? Yeah. So we'll, we'll come, a, right, then we hit our first parking sensors. So it's got two little ears that stick up like that and we've got to spread them sideways. So I just grab the side of those and try and, I wonder if I can push on the sensor, that's the way to do it, look. Push there and just spread these two little ears. You might see the ears better here, Tyler. I think everyone's got it, these. Just spread these apart here. Right, and that's the first one. Right, we're on, we're on the run now, Tyler. Right, so, get under there if I can. Nothing too fancy, it's just for a bit. Yeah, so it's just these little, they're never quite the same again. But right, and this one looks the same. Oh, that's broken, is it? Oh, is that oh, no, broken or clipped out? No, he's, he's clipped on. Different... He's got a different mechanism there. There's me thinking I've broken it. Has he got like little metal clips? Yeah, I think they just pull out. Yeah, yeah. look, they just pull out, look, they just pull towards you. Yeah, that's sweet, isn't it? Right, so, ah, I've, I've left one behind. I've left the soldier yeah. behind. There we go, they're, they're really good. Yeah, they just all click out. Just enough. Right, oh, I can get my finger under here. Hold on, where's it? Ah, hold on, I've got the tow eye cover under there. Uh, oh, it's, it's flopped off. There we go, so that's that. So we're all good here, Tom, we're racing there. I reckon we're good enough to be on YouTube, mate. I might actually like this one. I think there's some people that know, that know we, we certainly aren't good enough. <laughs> Those pro garage guys, I, I got nothing against you guys. You do a great job day in, day out. We just do this for a bit of hobby. Right, there we go, that's that. Right, fog light connector, you've got a little button, you've got to press on the side there. Yeah, because that's what I'm just worried about, water getting in those times. And then I think we are done on the electrics, aren't we? Ah, right then. That there, and another one of those tough ones. Right, so that is what you are left with. Right, that's part one. Right, we're gonna get on and do the washer jets now. Just a couple of points we're talking about. Make sure if you've got a second hand bumper, make sure you've got your white clips in here, 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 but you'll need to swap those over if it's not in the new bumper. We'll have a look at the new bumper. Um, if you're gonna throw it away, it's always worth keeping these. Right, let's start on the, so there's the ones we disconnected in the video. Right, now these are on a sort of pseudo, sort of almost fir tree type fixing. I just took one out so I'd look professional. That worked well, didn't it, Tyler? Banged in there. 
Right, so he's got like a sort of barbed fitting that goes into that sort of slotted hole. Right. Come near yeah, me. Please. Yeah, that's it. Right, there we go. Right, so that's coming up now. We could disconnect that there. They've got these sort of quick release fitting, but I'm not going to bother because I'm going to have to. It'll be more confusing to work out where everything goes putting it back together. <laughs> so that one. Well, I'm not sure how. I've got a rough idea how to. You know, you can have the screws on. Um, got a rough idea what we're doing here, but I'm not sure how this painted bit comes off the front tire. You may just have to be careful how those clip on. Yeah. We did this on the Mini, didn't we? They were easy on the Mini, but that's because they're part of the headlight. Right, so... Because this is a spring-loaded mechanism here, isn't it? And then what you've got, so you can actually then sort of, if you pull that back, and we want to just spread these little ears. You got that on camera, Tyler? Yeah. So just spread those apart, look. Yes, we'll just spread those apart there to release the, and that should give me, hopefully, that washer jet, I'll extract that way. Right, okay, this this bit here is just the clip, probably a bit dark, but that just, there you go, that one's an easier one to see. Right then, there we go, one, two, three. There's a load of those clips to fight out there. Yep, yeah, one other thing to quickly mention, these brackets here, this one's come loose when we were pulling it off. Make sure your replacement bumper, if you're getting a second-hand bumper you're upgrading to, make sure it comes with disassembly. There's lots of them out there where they've taken them off to fit body kits, and you'll get the bumper without this bit, and also without the washer jet holder, that little bit that sticks out. So make sure your replacements have got those, or you could be a bit stuck. Right, there we go. But that is what you will get left with, right? That is your washer jet dripping everywhere. So I think we are done with this bumper now. You could whip the fog lights out and you might better sell those on eBay. We've got the parking sensors out. We may need some fixings, we'll double check. But that is our strip down. That didn't take too long, did it, Tyler? That easy. Right, so we are gonna start with the electrics. They go in, if I start with the plug on this side, so that is the left-hand side of the car. Luckily, you're looking at it the correct way. Right, let's hope all these fit in the desired places, shall we, Tyler? The fog light, we've still got the... So, yeah, your, your cranked bit of this goes in. There's, there's got one open side on the parking sensor. So that should go in there. Now, we may have to colour code. We've got those stickers for these, haven't we, Tyler? Yeah. I think I might put the stickers on them. Right, now I'm going to put that one on there. Again, that's the same deal. That's, you know, they fit in nice. Right now, it looks like they've got the, I'll make sure we get this right. I might just clip this one in as well. So I know I'm not in a pickle. And then, that's it, they all line up with these little, I call them blades, can I call them blades? Yeah. Well, that one's not quite in the right place there, is it? Have I got, have I got that wrong? Right, so it's a little bit of a pickle. Get all your parking sensors in. The next two are to get in, get this one in here. Don't worry about those other clips. Get that, they're quite brutal, those. There you go. So get that one in there and get that one in there. So all the parking sensors are done. The fog lights we can cable tie up out the way. And then you've basically got to work out the best way. But they, you might need to retake those to do a really nice job because it looks like they're not in exactly the same spaces as before. And we can get that one on there, get those two little ones on, and then we get any of them in the middle. Yeah. So I think we're going to have to reposition some of those to get that on. Right, we'll have to retake those. Right, Tyler's done a lovely job. He's got all the wiring neat. He took those. Um, little sort of, they're like little splints, aren't they? Is that the word splints or stints? What is it? What's the right word, Tyler? I don't know. You know, we, um, I know what you mean, though. You know what I mean, yeah. And he's retaped them so they coincide with the with the bits on the bumper. He's got that neat, he's, he's covered up just to stop the water getting into those exposed connectors, both that one and that one. And he's rooted this. 
Now it's quite tight because you can see we've got we've got to be at this parking sensor here, and we've got to be at this connector here, and there's not room to go round or above really, so it's quite tight. So when it's on the car, we may have to cable tie that up a little bit higher, but for now we're okay there. So you'd have to look at your cable route in a bit. There is enough. Right now we're on to the washer jet. So. This looks like the spacing's much better on here. So let's get the these washer jet pipes. It's got the supports in here. That's it. Oh, that's lush. Ooh. Gosh. Heave, Charlie Mouse. That's it. Right. Okay. So that's it. And let's get the... I think it's even better to get all the clips in, isn't it? Yeah. Don't like dangly bits. We don't like it all dangling around. Right, now we've got to get those in the right way. That looks right, doesn't it? Well, that doesn't seem to be fighting, fighting me too much. And then we've just got to get these mounted. I got to, Right, so that's going to come out the back, isn't it? And obviously you've got the washer jet, which has got a point upwards towards the headlight so that is going to fit in no it's not going to clip in is it not necessarily let's, let's have a look i reckon it, it might not clip in because the way we took them out oh no no that's clipped ah. in tyler that's clipped in so we'll get the screws in there we'll do the same on the other one and then we've got the bumper all built up ready to go <laughs> right we're ready to fit the washer jet covery things now they're actually you think they're the same, but they're they're not. You can see that the SVR one on the left, as you're looking at it, is this one with the longer. So these bits here are longer, you can see that. And then if I put them face to face, obviously I've got a left and a right, line them up on one side, you can see the SVR one is also a bit bigger. So there you go. So if you get a bumper second hand or something, you're gonna need to get the SVR thingy covers right let's have a look have i got the right one here tyler no i've got the wrong one so right so you've got a, you can you can extend the jet by pushing on the end of that bit there and you can bring that out and then i haven't actually done this yet make sure you've got it the right way you gotta, it just spreads over those little pins there doesn't it yeah be careful not to break them here i've got one pin on two and then there you go that's it and then that should, the trick is going to be, does it retract to the correct... Where? Like that. Whoosh! Have your fingers off, Tyler. Right, so we'll get the other one of those on, and then, then we're all done, aren't we, Tyler? Right, so we've got the bumper, it's all now lovely and done. We have offered it up, and it all fits lovely, everything lines up, apart from the butt. Um, it's... It's, it's not sitting back far enough and it's pushing against this bit here. So we've been on the part numbering system and indeed this little plastic part here that you can see wiggling and these little side ducts are different for an SVR. So what I've done, I've placed an order now with Land Rover for but this part, so 300, how much was it Tyler? 397 So what so. I've done is I've ordered one at my expense we will get it here, and when you watch the next bit of the video, um, I will we will compare them, and hopefully I will better work out exactly the trim line, what the difference is, so we can we might even make a cardboard template so that you can trim yours exactly and save you needing to spend the money. And likewise, we'll do the same on these. But for now, we can get on. Just get them off. Get them off. So you've got these little fir tree fasteners. We haven't had these off yet, so but it doesn't look complicated. So fir tree fasteners. Right, so with the fir clip removed, we can move round to the side here. And I've coloured these in orange, obviously. And you can see there they've got a little clip that come down from the top a little bit tighter so you can see the that's it. So if you there you go. That unclips there. Now it's got a sneaky little fit in hidden in here. Let me get the torch even. There you go, you've got the torch there, Tyler. And we've coloured it in orange. So you've got a little bit there, and you just gotta press that bit in, and then you can pull. Whoa, that. So you can see there you've got that little bit and so what I was doing was just pushing that there to release it. So that's the sneaky little thing you've got to find. So that's that off. We'll get the other one off and then we'll have a go at getting this front section off. Right, 
So now we're ready to take this section here out. Now it's held in with three clips at the top here and I cannot work out how to get these out without breaking them. If you feel underneath, you can feel the barb, but I'm gonna break mine in the hope that you don't have to break yours, but hopefully you won't even need to take this out. As Tyler pointed out off camera, he said, well, that's a good reason why not to take this out. Right, so I'll show you what it is, but I'm gonna be a bit heathen, I'm afraid. Right, so we've oranged it all up. So if you have a look on there, you can see the three clips there. You can see the sort of end on, you can see the sort of spearheadness of them. So you've got one, two, three, and they go into these mouths here. But they lit, there's really hard to sort of, now you can see I've sort of broken that, I've ruptured it, haven't I, Tyler? Look, I've had a little yeah. rupture. This one here just gave way completely, and this one here is also ruptured. But there's no way you can, you know, it, it looks like the, the, the lugs, the, the gap is just wide enough for it to force its way through and to sort of open it up and unhook it seems really difficult. So there we go, maybe you have more luck than me, but hopefully we'll, so when we're, it's Friday now, um, but the next bit of this video, just in a second for you, but it will be next week for us, we will compare this to the SVR one, and maybe, hopefully you guys can get away with just cutting there. So right, let's crack on. Right, you join us on day two. Um, right, we've got our new camera back, so I've got my microphone back on. That took ages, but that's another story. Right, so, as you remember, just before, like three seconds ago for you guys, a day ago, for we took off the front plastic panels, and now we have got the new SVR front air duct panels. So, we are gonna try and work out, well, let's start with this one. So. This one, look, so they all come marked with RS for obviously Raleigh Sport. So it's actually the same molding. You can tell the molding number's the same. On the back, we've done our little geeky detective work. All the part numbers here are the same. And surprise, surprise, what they've done is they've just modified the exist. Now, how much was this bit, this new bit, Todd? It was loads of money, wasn't it? So the new bit, oh, the near me. Oh, uh, yes. Close to uh, 400 quid. 400 pounds. And the old bit is close to 200. Yeah, so it's an extra 200 pounds. And for that, you get less plastic, Tyler. <laughs> but what they've had to do, if you look, so let's get this right. This is the original, and this is the new one. And what they've done is literally just cut along this line here. So I've marked the orange line on here. So my advice to you, and what we will do is we will try and refit this bumper using as many of the modified original panels as possible so you can see the line here it's actually got a line in between these two sets of ribs you see how the ribs are sort of staggered well all you need to do is cut it just the rubbery trim side of that and then just follow the sort of curvature to that end little kink there and you're done and that will give you and the other side if i just spin them over the other side isn't modified at all so it's only that one side you need to modify everything else there we're playing spot the difference, aren't we, Tyler? One's dirty. Yeah, one's dirty. Right, so so we are going to modify that. We will get the, I don't know what, chopping tool of choice are we going to... I'm just going to run the grinder up that, yeah. I think. Yeah, right. Okay, so that's, in some ways, the easy one. Right. So these are the side panels here. Now, these are a different moulding. These aren't just a modified panel. And what we did was, yeah, pass me those, Tyler. Thank you. Right then, so... We have made up some little jigs here because it was hard to try and see the difference. So what we did was we made up a jig and like that and said, well, let's look what that looks like. These rubber trims on here, you can pull off as you want. And we thought, right, let's make a thing that fits on there. And let's see what you need to modify on this one to make it fit the same shape. And basically we need to cut a bit off this face here but everything else on there, in fact, if anything, it overhangs slightly, but we're not going to worry about that. We might lose fractional air cooling. It's just never going to happen. So that surface is all right, right? And then if I flip it over the other way and get this other template. So again, we can pull the rubber trim off here if we to have a look at the shape. And then what we did was we made, a Tyler made one of these. You can bend that, put that there. So that's the shape pretty much that we've got on that one. And then if I apply the same thing to this one here, um, again, what we've got is we've just got a, 
we've just got to cut a little bit off this end here. So if you pass me the infamous orange pen, Tyler, we'll mark that bit up. Right, so there. So let's just show you what needs trimming then. Um, so this, that bit there needs trimming. So hopefully you can sort of interpolate that. I've got the other one next to it there. So we can have a look at those two, right? And then on this top face here, what, what we need to do, I'm trying to get them. They've, they've put this sort of thing there. So, so this front edge here needs cutting off. So see, we, we label, that was, that's nothing to do with the cutting. You need to cut around there a little bit. That face is fine, that face is fine. So it's literally just that corner and then that bit there, okay? And it's exactly the same on the other one. So, so those two faces are fine. You've got to cut that, that bit off there along the front there, okay? And then you've got that little top corner to do on that one and then we're home and dry. So we will get and get busy chopping and putting the rubber trim back on, and then we'll come back. So yeah, we are gonna try and not use the genuine proper parts. We are gonna try and do it as you guys are gonna do it, cutting it. There we go, we'll finish cutting that. Oh, there you go. Tidy that up and we'll cut the rest of the bit. Obviously the cutting disc's not the official way of doing it, but for doing this quickly, it's not too bad. Right, so we've just put that middle bit on. I was a bit worried because of those clips that, but it actually is just clipped on, sweet. It, it, it's going nowhere anyway. So we're all lined up, so that's that. Right, so we are not gonna fit the RS ones. We'll. Uh, we are gonna go with the modified one. So Tyler's modified them and we're gonna to have to cut this rubber because it's got nothing to stick to. We could put a little bit here. So let me get some tin snips and we'll cut this off. Oh, there we go. Yeah, just, just tighten the nut up on those and they seem to be actually working there. Ish, right. So I'm gonna put a little bit across there. Is it worth putting a little bit across there? Tyler hardly, is it? There's hardly anything to... We'll put a little bit there. Yeah, just stop anything to rattling, won't it? So that's exactly the same one it was on before. And then that should locate onto those Right, so when you're putting this on, make sure you get these two little tabs on the outside, sort of towards the camera, and then that little ramp needs to go at the back. So once that's clipped on, that's a good job. And then this one should, you should pick up on those, shouldn't you, Tyler? There you go. That's that. So that's all, that's all neat enough. And then we've got the fir tree fixings going the front. <coughs> Right, I'll get the other one on and then we're ready to get the bumper. Right, so we are nearly ready to fit the bumper. We've got all the ducting on now. One thing we've got to do is we've got to take these little docking brackets. Now, the, look, there's a little screw there we've highlighted, orange, always. Oh, oh gosh. Now, Craig at Camtech was saying you could take this screw out instead of removing the two screws at the top, but... It's a point of some debate. Let me show you and let's have a think about it. Right, so that's the little bracket there and, and that forms the little docking bracket which, which this sort of clips into. Um, so you've got these, that, see that little slope there? That's what grips it. Now, obviously when we go to fit it on the car, it's gonna be useful to have those two, there's two little ramps there, to have those ready. So we are gonna fit it loosely. We're gonna put the two bolts that go through these holes. We're gonna bolt that up to the car. Um, and then when we come to fit the, tire, the bumper, just Tyler and I, we can fit it over those and then we'll tighten those two bolts up to bring it right up close. So we'll have it there ready 
to receive the bumper. Um, but Craig was saying if you wanted, you could loosen those two bolts when you're taking it off, remove this extra bolt from under the wing, and rather than having to undo these two bolts here that were tricky, you could just take this one out. And then once you've lowered it enough, you can extract it. But I was quite happy the way we did it. It wasn't too bad, but up to you. Anyway, so we'll get those off. The other thing we need to remember to take off the bumper is all these little clips. So we've got to remember where these go roughly. But I think they're fairly obviously, aren't they, Tyler? Yeah, because the new bumper didn't come. So these are the clips that form a little holder for the self-tapping screw. Okay, and that's all we need. Yeah, this bracket shouldn't be detached. It should be there. Right, we'll get all that done and we'll get these put on this new bumper. Right, these little clips, they're quite easy to, they come, they go back on, but they do click on. They're quite nice. They've got a nice little snap. But if we put those on, I don't want to do them uber tight though, because I'm a bit worried about the getting in there and clamping it. Um, but sometimes you do rip the bumper when you take them off those clips. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still undecided, but I think Craig did say loosen them a bit. So we'll just, we'll just fit those on there loosely, but at least it will grip and hold the bumper. So let's have a look, Tyler. We're nearly ready to go, aren't we? We've got wire in this side. We've got washer jet that side. We're all connected. Right, I think you're gonna have to balance that camera on the table, Tyler, and let's have a go at whether we can record it. One, two, three, and boom. It is indeed like Morris dancing. Right, we're all good, we're all good, we're all good. Right. Now, let's have a look, what are, we, what are we lining up here, Tyler? That hole, this hole, yeah, th this slides on here. All right. All right, now I I've got the front, you grab fronts, that's all clipped on. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's clipped on. All right. Your side in? Yeah. Right, grab the camera and we'll do my side in. Right, so that all went to plan, didn't it, Tyler? That doesn't always happen. Right then, so we just got, you just got to make sure we pull those up there. There we go, it feels a bit grizzly, but it's a slight, is that wrong? What are we doing for colour match? It's not too bad, is it? But we know our car's been resprayed, so I'm not gonna. Right, so we will get those bolts tightened up behind there. We've got the self tapper to fit back up in there. But let's have a look at our work toilet. Let's have a look how we're looking. Obviously, until we've got all the grill and stuff back in. Right, we'll get together. We'll probably do a bit of a time lapse video. We could put it back on our trolley jack. Look at our, our axle. This is our camera stand. No expense bed here. And then we'll just strap that into the back of there, look. And we can carry on with our, there you go. Right, one thing we've just noticed missing is the, oh, I ain't got my microphone on. Right, it'll still record though, won't it, Tyler? Yeah. It's missing, I went to fit the grill, and the grill mouth, it must be in the old bumper. So I'll just, we'll just go and get that. Right, you join us in the van. Right, where are those little grill mouths? So there you go, so they're these little plasticky bits here. Look. So let me see how they, they should just pop out. Right then, so there you go, there's the, so there's two of those, one in each side, so remember to take those out of your bumper too. Right, we go, we just, 
jacked it up just to get that wheel arch liner on so all looking good there one last one thing we've got to show you here is the wind deflectors at the bottom that go underneath the bumper so we'll do that in a second but you can already see now it's starting to look pretty cool we got our facelift grill on it it's all going together clock like clockwork in it tyler okay. um, let me give you around that and we have to use our camera stand to actually jack the vehicle we got an axle We've got an axle stand underneath. Hang out under there somewhere, you can see. They <gasps> quite a pick to fit those wheels. They're so new. They're those new wheels we fitted Tyler, and they're, they're heavy. They're heavy, and they're um they're tight on that hub where they're sort of not worn at all. You've got to get them on spot on. Right, so we're just going to fit this lower trim on this side. We decided my ego won't fit under here, so Tyler's offered to do it. So there we go. So we you got three now there is actually an extra clip we're not going to show this one on video you have to take the toe eye cover back out again to fit that one um oh there's four as well there's that yeah, one at the end yeah right let's have a look then tyler so slide under here Arrgh! so it's quite nifty actually there is on the end of the toe eye cover there's this little peg here and there's actually a slot in the in the end of the bumper for in the end of that wind deflector for it if you get it right get that right and then push it that's it and that all clips together there and then it should line up now some of the screws go through the bumper into the wheel arch line so sometimes you've got to like move the wheel arch line backwards and forwards no. so the little self tapping screw lines up with it but basically it's not that exciting to watch so i'll let tyler get on with that but it's basically three self tapping four self tapping screws and then there's that one that goes in the end of the wheel arch in there so while tyler's doing that I'll show you it all done on the other side. So, there's the wind deflector under here. You can see the, the screws in there. And there's one right in the end of the wheel arch. There we go, and you can even see the little captive little thing there. So while Tyler does that, we'll have a little look at the body kit. It's looking pretty good. So there we go, we're nearly there. I'll do one last show outside if the, if the light holds up. There's a slight, slight colour change there, but that's the SVR bumper coming along. And there we go, it's ten past five and we got it done. So let's have a look how it looks in the daylight. So there we go. Range Rover Sport L494 SVR conversion. Uh, it's taken us a couple of days. We've taken our time. We have to order some panels. So what do you need? You need a bumper with a tow eye cover and washer jets. You need the little air deflectors. Other than that, it's trimming your, trimming the air ducting inside. Uh, everything else, your headlights, you can change your grill if you want, leave your grill. There's nothing else, all the parking sensors, washer jets, we'll check all that works in the morning. We'll check the parking sensors work, we'll check the washer jet washers pop out and pop in. The wheel arch liners are the same. It's not too bad a job. It's a, to be honest, it's a lot easier than I thought. Now we will do the 2018 facelift conversion. We'll probably drive this for a week or two now. It seems a shame we'll have to take it all off, but it's what we do. We work out how to do it on our car so you don't have to mess it up on your car. So, um, oh yeah, the number plate plinth, we just took that off. That was the last bit we took off the, the old bumper and that fits all exactly the same. So I'll just give you a little zoom around it now, put some photos of it up. Um, they will be for sale on our website, the front bumper conversion. We'll do them in primer, painted black and painted gray. There will be some slight colour difference just because of the way your paint's aged. Um, but the fit and the panel gaps and everything are all, all pretty good. We happy with that, Tyler? Yeah, thumbs up. Right, let's get out of here.